Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I have an important video for you guys today as we are nearing closer and closer to us actually getting our hands on FIFA 20 Ultimate Team. It's literally like three days, two or three days from now, depending on when the web app drops, depending on EA Access, if it actually drops when it's supposed to. Just be ready, that's all I'm saying, because it might go a little early. It's happened in years past. But today, I want to get you guys prepared and ready for advanced SBCs that are probably going to be coming out onto FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, I'm looking at this because this is something that has been happening for the past two years on foot. So FIFA 18 and FIFA 19, there were advanced SBCs that dropped. Uh, FIFA 18, they dropped later in the year. FIFA 19, last year, they dropped right at the beginning of the game. And I expect them to drop at the beginning of the game this year as well. So I want to take a look at them. Kind of talk about if you're using FIFA points or if you're not using FIFA points, where you could go with these SBCs and if they're going to be worth it. Like, is it worth to do the advanced SBCs early on in the game? So, first thing I want to look at are these SBCs on Footbin. We're going to look at the hybrid leagues, hybrid nations, and also hybrid league and nation. I think it's actually called the league and nation hybrid. Yeah, it's this one right here. Uh, we're going to look at their prices throughout the year, what they were costed to do at the very beginning of the year last year, and if I think they're going to be the same this year. Uh, spoiler alert, I think they will be. But I'm getting this, some of this information from FIFAAUteam.com. So basically what I looked up last year was to see when were these SBCs dropped exactly. And these SBCs were all dropped on September 20th, 2018, which was the Thursday that EA Access was released. Actually, EA Access came out earlier last year. That's why I mentioned earlier that we could see FIFA Ultimate Team come out on EA Access a little bit early because they tend to drop it like a day early and kind of release it um, to some people and they just kind of roll it out like in, in increments almost, it seems. Uh, so last year, these came out on September 20th. The Hybrid Leagues, the Hybrid Nations, and the Hybrid League and Nations SBC. All three of them came out on the 20th of September last year, and that date for this year is the 19th. So Thursday the 19th is when you should see these SBCs dropped into the SBC section of FIFA Ultimate Team. So during that time period, we're gonna be on the web app uh, and getting on EA Access for the first time if uh, that is rolling out like it should be. And since these SBCs have been the same in FIFA 18 and FIFA 19, I'm expecting them to be the exact same SBCs in FIFA 20. So that's one thing that can help you guys plan for this, is you can actually start to look at some of these squads right now, the rare fives, the seven suspects, prime nine, and squad goals, all from the hybrid leagues. And you can kind of plot out, depending on what you get from your starter packs and what you get from, if you're gonna open packs during EA Access with FIFA points, you can kind of keep in mind, hey, this guy might be good for this SBC. You can even look at some of the completed challenges on Footbin for FIFA 19, because the requirements should be exactly the same. You can look at these SBCs and kind of say, all right, well, for this SBC, uh, okay, we need loyalty for this SBC, which is awesome. Not really, but you can see, all right, we have some Argentines here, an entire Argentinian squad with a lot of different leagues. Um, I think this is inside of hybrid leagues, which would make sense. It is squad goals. So that's what I would do, uh, at least to start off with, is kind of keep that in mind, that maybe keeping some of these players would help for SBCs if you're in that EA access period, especially if you're opening packs. Now I kind of want to get into, are they worth it? Because that's the big question. Is it worth it to spend some of your hard-earned FIFA Ultimate Team coins right at the beginning on these SBCs? Uh, if you're dropping 30,000 coins on an SBC, which is about what these cost per SBC, you want to make sure that you're getting the value back from the packs. And since the packs, since the gold cards that are in the packs are worth more at the very start of the game during EA Access or even during Web App, um, then it just makes this SBC more worth it. So we can look at the price fluctuations for all these SBCs last year, thanks to Footbin's incredible tools. Uh, and you can see last year, right at the beginning of the year, this SBC was costing right around 30,000 coins, and it really didn't move all year. It was about 30,000 coins all year. A couple times you could have done for cheaper. But you can see it's a tiny bit higher down here in the bottom left hand. You can see you know, 32, 34,000 coins. It kind of trickled down to like 20K. Um, but right at the beginning of the game, it's around 30,000 coins. And you'll be able to get some of these cards through packs that you get, welcome back packs and stuff like that. So 
this is kind of the question that it brings. Is it worth it? And I'm saying I think it is because look at the packs that you get back from here. You get a jumbo gold pack, a jumbo premium gold pack, a prime gold players pack, and a mega pack. You're going to get consumables. You're going to get a lot of players from a pack like this. This SBC alone costs 9,000 coins. That's another thing. You don't have to complete the entire SBC, although it is worth it because you get the main uh, reward. But you get the some of these SBCs are almost worth it to do on their own. Like if you started off doing hybrid leagues and you did the prime gold players pack SBC, I think I could be wrong with this, but I think that's a 45k pack. Um, and that's a lot of players. That's a lot of players for the start of the game. Even if you get four or five players in there that are like 76 rated or below, or maybe 79 rated or below, you might get a guy like Wabi Saka, or you might get somebody like Alessandrini, who is a popular player early game because of the good nation, but a little bit of an off league. So he could be popular for SBCs. If you're already doing the SBC, you can just sell that player if you don't need him for another one and take those coins so that's one thing that these SBCs can help you out with they can even help you out with getting packs for to get players to help you with the other SBCs so you can keep recycling them in that manner if you're really hardcore about this and want to make sure that you're not wasting any coins and being the most efficient but it's all coming down to are these SBCs worth it at the beginning of the game now we're going to look at the next one hybrid nations has the squads with quads the six it takes eight and national pride um, and this one was again about a similar price actually a little bit cheaper But the pack that you get actually the packs are about the same the packs for this one are actually better premium gold players pack Premium gold pack prime gold players pack and a mega pack So compared to the hybrid leagues instead of a jumbo premium gold and a jumbo gold You get a premium gold players pack which I think is a 25k and then a premium gold pack So I think for this one hybrid nations might be a little bit better value and it's cheaper you look, you look at this, about 25,000 coins to complete these squads. So maybe this is one that you would look to do first early on in FIFA Ultimate Team. But this one I think is worth it. All the squads range are right around from like 4 to 8K per squad. So it's very cheap. And you do get some solid packs back. This one I would highly recommend doing since it's about 5 to 10K cheaper than some of the other ones, the other two SBCs. And you do get uh, some good packs back from this one. So the Hybrid Nations, uh, that's a full send for me. Do that one. I would highly recommend doing that one because it is pretty cheap. And also the League and Nation Hybrid. This one is the hardest. The Hybrid Master gives you a 50k pack. Getting a 50k pack in the first week of FIFA is nuts. And this is available to everybody. This is a big time pack. If you're able to get this SBC done for a reasonable cost, you have some big time opportunity here to make a lot of profit because you're getting 12 gold players all rare. And that's huge at the start of the game. You have a lot of players. You know, you might pack an 84, a couple 82s, and then a bunch of like 80s, 79s, 75s. You know, 75s might not be worth much, but the 80s, you know, you might get an 80 rated player. Um, trying to think of an 80 rated player that is a beast for a starter squad. Um, Furlan Mendy. You could easily pack a guy like Furlan Mendy or Militao or Areola. Those guys that are 82 rated that have really good pack weight. Even if you get an 83 like Trent Alexander Arnold, you might be looking at 15,000 coins. So that's the thing with these SBCs that if you hit one of those players, if you get a board drop, um, as long as it's not an SBC fodder player, you're looking at some very good value. For some of these packs and that's that's the term that I think could be used a lot with these packs is good value so this one the hybrid nations and leagues league and nation hybrid whatever it's called 35 to 40,000 coins is what it takes to complete this SBC this one is the most expensive out of, out of all of them and I do believe that it requires um, for this hybrid master I do believe that it requires uh, you to have all your players on 10 chem so that requires loyalty which means that you have to spend some time actually going into the game. And um, if you're on EA Access, you know you don't want to use your 10 hours doing this. Uh, if you're on the web app, then I would highly recommend, I would actually highly recommend doing these SPCs on the web app if you have the coins to do them. If you're an RTG guy, and this is what I want to get into at the end of the video, is it actually worth it for an RTG guy to do these SPCs right away during the web app before you have any time to get onto the game? And since you're not putting FIFA points in, you're going to be kind of on a lower budget unless you pack something from Welcome Backpacks or whatever. There's a lot of different scenarios, but the average RTG person is going to be at a less coin total than somebody who's open, opening FIFA points. And that, I think, plays into the strategy with this 
For sure. So this one, if you're op if you're doing these SBCs, I would do this one last. I would do the league and nation hybrid last because I would wait to do this SBC. If you don't want to try to do glitches and stuff for EA access, if that's not what you're about, if you don't want to pay five dollars multiple times just to get the extra access, then just wait to do this one until pre-order access or until you get the full version of the game out in your hands available to be played. When you get that, then I would recommend going in here and doing the League and Nation Hybrid SBC because it does require that loyalty. You can get into squad battles, you can do um, some no loss glitches or whatever you do to get your loyalty on these players for the Hybrid Master SBC. Um, you can do that then and it doesn't come at the expense of your time that's being used for the 10 hours of EA access. So again, if you're somebody who's putting in FIFA points at the start of the game, you're already gonna have some coins sitting there ready for you to do SBCs, build a team or whatever, I would use some of those coins. I mean, in total, this is probably going to cost you, if you're opening 12k FIFA points at the start of the game, you're probably going to have somewhere around 150 to 200,000 coins when it's all said and done. If you spend about 75k on these SBCs, which I think is reasonable, uh, considering that you would pack some players that you would keep in your club from that 12k FIFA points that you could use in these SBCs, so it might cut off a little bit of the cost, then I think that you would definitely be profiting from that 75k that you invest into these SBCs. There's definitely going to be some profit there on those SBCs. So if you're an RTG player, I would say maybe try to do the hybrid nations and then wait to see how your coin total looks. But this is not something that I would do that if you have 30,000 coins in the web app stages of FIFA, I would not run and do this SBC and think that this is going to double your coins or you're going to get you're gonna spend 30K on this SBC and get 100K back because that is likely not the case, all right? That is, that's just not how it works with packs because packs are designed to make you lose money and not gain money. And unfortunately, that's how it is in this game. But packs are fun, right? And we all like packs. So I would just wait a little bit longer down the line. I would try to do this again before the full game release because when the full game release comes out, you're gonna lose a lot of value from these packs with the 80 rated cards and the 79 rated cards that are maybe going for four to 5K, they're gonna be dipping down with all the packs being opened on the full game release, they're gonna be dipping down a lot. And as you can see, the full game release doesn't really make a difference on these SBC prices, maybe a tiny bit, uh, but not a notable difference in terms of their value all year. It stayed pretty similar, uh, right around, you know, within five to 10K for each SBC. It's, it matter, no matter when you do it, you'll get the players, you can kind of work towards it and, um, and get the packs. I think this is a very good SBC to do, and I would highly recommend doing this SBC within the first week or two of FIFA. If you're not able to get to it in that time period, um, I would suggest really trying hard to. If you're somebody who is not the best at trading and you only have 20, 30,000 coins by the full game release, that's okay. That's not a problem. Just wait to do these SBCs until you have a considerable amount of coins. Um, like exactly, I'll put a number on it. I would say don't do this SBC until you have at least 100,000. I wouldn't even do one of them until you have 100,000. If you have 100,000 coins, hit the hybrid nations, see what it does for you. If you can make some money back from those packs, awesome. Maybe try another one, try a couple more SBCs from there. And then uh, if you don't make your money back though, I would steer, steer clear, keep trading, keep playing games, grind up that coin total, and then you can revisit the opportunity of doing these SBCs again. But I wanted to cover this topic today because I know a lot of people are wondering, hey, do I need to save players for this when I open packs? I would say, sure, you can save a couple, but if it's any player that is inflated at all for a usable in-game card with good stats, don't use that into an SBC, sell that one, get it on the market, take the coins, and then buy a different player for cheaper to do this SBC. So all in all, I think these SBCs are worth it. Take a, take a hit at uh, Hybrid Nations first, then go for Hybrid Leagues, and then try to finish it off with the League and Nation Hybrid when the full game comes out so that you're not messing with your 10 hours of uh, EA in-game access. But if you enjoyed this video, boys, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.